Well, let's stay with that story and join the Ambassador Mohamed Afi, who's the UNHCR Special Envoy on Somali refugees, and he's in Nairobi now. Thank you very much for coming on to the programme. Just how bad is the situation at the moment? Well, I mean, the situation, uh, humanitarian situation in Somalia is uh, very bad. It is in dire need of uh, emergency support. Uh, there has been a river, drought, uh, serious drought ravage in the country, almost leading to a famine. And the situation is such that urgent interventions are, are required by uh, friends of Somalia and the international community as soon as possible. And there was a similar situation a few years ago, and many people died. How, how does this compare? Well, uh, 11, uh, 11 years ago, we had a similar situation. Uh, and uh, it is apparent that uh, if, if there are no urgent interventions uh, from all of us, uh, then we might have uh, serious consequences in Somalia. Already there are, ele there are some parts of Somalia which has reported deaths. Others have reported displacements as we speak. A big number of uh, those displaced to move into the neighboring countries, particularly Ethiopia. And uh, some uh, deaths, as I said, have been reported. So there is need, uh, actually urgent need, uh, for all of us uh, globally to get uh, uh, attention to Somalia uh, so that we can be able to avert uh, catastrophe. But, but what more specifically can the international community do? Well, I mean, the international community uh, certainly uh, can be able to get involved in terms of uh, urgent, uh, urgent needs uh, of, the, of, the, of the displaced population. Uh, there is massive loss of livestock. There is massive loss of water. There is food crisis in the country. So there is need to provide almost all the basic services to more than 6 million people around the country. And uh, for that to happen, the international community needs to mobilize substantial uh, efforts, collective efforts, so that uh, more deaths can be, can, be, can be avoided, so that more displacement of the Somali population can be, can be avoided by getting into the populations where they are and helping them to avert the crisis that we are currently facing in the country. And you're actually attending a summit at the moment on this. Is there any sign that agreement to get the things you want put into place is actually going to happen? Well, I mean, the, in the sub-region, there's uh, collective interest in the situation of Somalia. As you know, that uh, the summit that you referred to a few days ago discussed stabilization in Somalia. It discussed the efforts of the regional countries in trying to help Somalia recover as soon as possible. It also discussed the possibility of massive displacement in the country and, in fact, to how to be able to help them by making the borders open. Uh, because, as you know, that the displacements uh, lead to massive migration into the neighboring countries and the asylum space to be maintained. And already to help the refugees that are in the sub-region, as you know, that in this sub-region, we have got over 900,000 Somali refugees displaced over the last 25 years. It's one of the most protracted refugee crises we have in the, in the world. And the summit has brought attention to the fact that this population, the Somali population, who are already refugees in the sub-region require continued protection, they require continued assistance, and above all, they require to go back home one day, and that home is Somalia, and there is need to have a collective effort to make Somalia more stable, to make the conditions in the country more dignified and reliable, so that for those who would like to return back to Somalia, go back in a condition of safety and dignity, and for those who are there, uh, remain in the country to avoid a massive displacement. So this was a unique summit. And we would like, as UNHCR, to thank the leaders from the sub-region for thinking about this summit, because it will be timely, and we congratulate them. And finally, you actually yourself went and met some of the refugees. Uh, any particular personal stories that really affected you? Well, very, very, very many, many stories. I went to all the camps that uh, housed the Somali refugees, including the ones in Yemen. And, and as you know, that the Somali population in Yemen face a serious protection crisis because of the conflict in Yemen itself. But the ones I have seen in Djibouti, in Ethiopia, in Kenya, they are really frustrated a lot. They do not want to stay in the refugee camp anyone in any day extra. There's a sense of hopelessness. There's really serious crisis of nutrition. As you know, the World Food Program substantially cuts supplies to the camps. There is no sufficient uh, education facilities available or creation of skills. 
So it's absolute hopelessness in these camps. And I think that a camp that was supposed to have been temporary for a while has continued to stay in the sub-region for 25 years. You are dealing with a third generation Somali refugees in the sub-region. And I think there is need for collective international attention to this population so that we develop the necessary skills even as they remain in, the, in these areas. We give them sufficient nutrition so they can remain healthy. And above all, we, we continue to support the countries that continue to host these refugees so they don't feel the fatigue of hosting refugees for a long period of time. Mohamed Afi in Nairobi, thank you very much for joining us.